during the last century, the average IQ in the Western world has been rising. This is an effect called the Flynn effect, named after James Flynn, an intelligence researcher from the University of Otago, which apparently is in New Zealand. And that Flynn effect is the thing that we are going to talk about today. Welcome to Brains Applied. Intelligence is measured through what is called an IQ test. They were developed in the last century by people who wanted to have a standardized test to measure intelligence. People such as the US military, the statistician Francis Galton, or the French psychologist Alfred Binet. Not to be mistaken with bidet, which is a French way of cleaning your ass with water. But the abbreviation IQ comes from the German psychologist William Stern, who first came up with the term Intelligenz quotient. As multiple persons and organizations were working on their own IQ tests, there is a variety of different IQ tests. But all of them look like this. You start by solving a bunch of problems and questions that range in difficulty. And on your answers, you get a certain score. For example, 532. This score is then put on a certain scale to translate it to your IQ level. And this scale is standardized to the population. What does that mean? Let me explain. When researchers are developing an IQ test, they grab a bunch of 1000 or 5000 or 10,000 or even more participants and they let them solve their test. When you visualize the scores of the 10,000 participants, you are very likely to get a graph like this. When the graph of your data looks like this, statisticians say that your data is normally distributed. A normal distribution is something which occurs very often in nature. This is for example a graph of people's height, or their weight at birth, or the probability of you getting heads an X amount of time when you do a few coin tosses. And this also occurs in IQ tests. The researchers then check what the median is of all the original test scores of the participants, for example 532 and this score is defined as IQ equals 100 meaning that the average person will have an IQ of 100. They then go to one standard deviation to the left and they say that this point is IQ 100 minus 15 while one standard deviation to the right is IQ 100 plus 15. You probably don't know what standard deviation is, so let me explain. Standard deviation is a number that is used to tell people how spread out the data points in your dataset are from the average. So when you have a low standard deviation, it means that the majority of data points in your dataset are very close to the average data points. And when you have a high standard deviation, the data points in your dataset are more spread out. Or in a mathematical formula, it's this. Basically, you take the average of the differences between the average measurement and the real measurements. The reason why you square it and then take the square root is that you don't want to be bothered by the negative values that you get when your real measurements are below your average measurements. And that is why IQ 85 and 115 are so important. And a fun thing to know is that when your data is normally distributed, about 68% of your population will always be closer than one standard deviation away from the average. And about 95% of your population will be closer than two standard deviations away. When your test score is lower than two standard deviations from the average, or when your IQ is lower than 70, you will be seen as intellectually disabled. When your original test score is better than two standard deviations away from the average, or when your IQ is higher than 130, you are seen as intellectually gifted. Of course, there are a few things that we need to keep in mind when talking about IQ and IQ tests. IQ tests make an estimation of your intelligence. 
You can't measure your intelligence in the same way as you measure your weight or your height. It's an estimation. And as there are many different IQ tests, it's very likely that you get a different score on different IQ tests. And IQ tests are about your abstract thinking and your problem solving skills. It doesn't say anything about your creativity or your social intelligence. And it definitely doesn't say anything about your chances for success or your motivation. A person with a high IQ might be flipping burgers at McDonald's, while a person with a lower IQ might be having his own business. And in the past, IQ tests have been heavily criticized as some of them actually appear to work specifically well for people from specific Western cultures. So we can hardly call IQ tests universal. But that being said, let's go back to our grandparents. Over time, scientists have noticed that they had to change their IQ scale as people increasingly started scoring better and better, with as a consequence that the average IQ was above 100. Estimations nowadays say that in the last century, our average IQ rose by 2.93 points every decade. And this continuous rise in IQ is called the Flynn Effect. But what about other population differences? It has been shown that men and women score equally well on IQ tests, with women sometimes even scoring a tiny, tiny bit better, depending on the tests. In Europe, it has been shown that people from Central European countries score a bit better than people from Eastern European countries as well as countries like Spain, Portugal and Italy. And in the United States of America, it has been shown that African Americans on average score less than Caucasian people. Now before you guys start rioting, I want to say this. James Flynn, the man himself, has stated that he does not believe that intelligence is racially defined. In his book he even points out that not so long ago some American psychologists believed that Irish immigrants were genetically inferior because they scored less good on IQ tests. And if you look at the typical, stereotypical Irish person, I can imagine that you think that something's wrong. However, as soon as the Irish immigrants started investing in proper education, they closed the IQ gap. And in the same way, African Americans and Eastern Europeans are now closing their IQ gap. So the question remains, what causes the Flynn effect? The first thing is obviously education. Over the past century, our education system has become better and an increasing amount of people had access to better and more education. And it has been shown that people who attend school score way better on IQ tests than people who don't go to school. When you don't go to school, your IQ level also seems to drop. In the 1960s, some counties in Virginia closed their public schools to make sure that black and white children wouldn't get mixed after segregation was ended. As private schools were only for the rich white kids, African American children had no formal education. And it was measured that during this period of time, they lost about 6 IQ points per year. Along with education, the second factor is how stimulating your environment is. Over the last century, our environment has become much more complex. We went from always living in the same town and working on the field and maybe reading a book to traveling the world, having access to enormous amounts of data and for many people also having jobs that are more cognitively demanding. And this complex environment has stimulated our brain and improved it. The third probable factor is nutrition. During the past century people have gotten access to more and better food and this has allowed us to become taller with bigger heads and bigger brains. And of course being taller and having a bigger head and bigger brains doesn't say everything as many people from East Asia are smaller yet more intelligent. 
but it has been shown that nutrition deficiencies can affect the development of our brain. And some studies even claim that this is one of the best explanations for the Flynn effect. The last probable explanation is infectious diseases. As our GDP and literacy and welfare rose during the last century, healthcare became better and infectious diseases became less prevalent. Infectious diseases are diseases like measles or chickenpox. They are caused by organisms such as bacteria and viruses. And they are thought to be one of the factors that limit our development. One study stated, from an energetic standpoint, a developing human will have difficulty building a brain and fighting off infectious diseases at the same time, as both are very metabolically costly tasks. And studies have supported this hypothesis and shown that in areas where a lot of people suffer from infectious diseases, people tend to have lower IQs and lower cognitive abilities. The Flynn effect isn't all fun and games. At the end of the 20th century, the rise in IQ has stagnated. And in some Western countries, the average IQ has even lowered over the past two decades. And this is a fairly recent finding, so there is very little research about it. But explanations range from pollution to immigration to computers. And that, my friends, is all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, press the like button. And of course, if you don't want your IQ to decrease, press the subscribe button and the notification bell so you receive a free notification and free intelligence points next time when I upload a new video. And I will see you guys later.